too late. She died two hours ago. Relief Society sisters are preparing her for burial. Brother Johnson, your wife would like to talk to you. My darling. I had the most wonderful dream. There was a man with white hair and a full white beard sitting here beside my bed. He told me that I would bear and raise seven daughters. The man also said there would be a time in life when they would all stand together. It would be a great joy to me. Being worthy when your opportunity arrives is a lesson it took me years to learn. It is for me what a good life is all about. As a boy, becoming a good man was the furthest thing from my mind.
It wasn't the first time I'd put Lindy up wet. But as it was Sunday, Pa couldn't take it to me till the Sabbath had passed. They went off to church, and that gave me time to make the decision to strike off on my own. <laughs> I've always loved the Sabbath. I determined to show my parents I could sort out what this life is all about and grow up to become a good man. I worked my way around parts of the country for a time, learned what they knew, and then found myself in the United States Navy on the USS Columbia. Three years later, I was back where I began, at the port of Boston. May have broke your shine on that one, eh? Okay. Be quick about it, eh? What? You looking for a Boston, mister? That's quite a temper you've developed there. Yes, so? Where is your home? Ohio, who's asking? How long since you've been there? Three years, now who's asking? Three years is a long time from those you cherish. Yeah. Well, I hope nobody's waiting for me at the window, because I'm going to town, changing ships, and off for another three years. May I offer to watch your belongings in your absence? Now, why would I ever... Yes. I'll be obliged, sir. Thank you kindly. Hey, quit your dawdling. Time's a wasting. We got good times to be had tonight. Ephraim? What kind of name is Ephraim, anyway? Uh, I haven't heard a name there peculiar since those. Uh, I was these guinea blokes, eh? Strange birds they were. I don't care on the boat with sack of As quickly as he had arrived, the man in the gray tweed suit was gone. A new thought entered my head. I made the decision to forego the Navy and return home. Now in my later years, I see more clearly. Though as a boy, I had stayed close to God. As a sailor, I was drifting further and further away. It was time to return and make amends with my parents. I believe you took a wrong turn, neighbor. Mother? See? Ephraim! Ephraim! Oh, my boy! Where was he buried? Near the South Oak. Did he have an ailment? What did he die of? He was old, Ephraim. He was 52. During those years at sea, I... I wanted to make you and Father proud. Now I'll never know. 
If you have any regrets, son, let them be for your brother, Sidney. Sid? Where's Sidney? He's been led away by the terrible Mormons. Mormons? They have cast a spell upon him. Where is he? Way out west, almost to the ocean in Illinois. Well, then I will go and free him. Yes, go. As soon as you are able. Saving Sydney was what my mother wanted and seemed to be an opportunity to show her I could do something good. Looking back, it seems like everything that happened in my life was the lesson God wanted me to learn. Like the morning a visitor stopped by to teach me about keeping my head. Some days, lessons come one after another. After taking the right path, a strange despair fell upon me, and I was overpowered by a stupor of thought. What's the matter with me, Acorn? I'm a blather an idiot. Must have taken a wrong path. Something is amiss. I do not know what to do. Blessed Father, it's been a long time since I've done this. For the first time in years, I prayed. Seems since I was a boy, the Lord was always willing to keep in touch with me if I was willing to keep in touch with Him. And though I'd been absent without leave, the Lord was quick to whisper what I should be doing. I felt impressed to get on back home. Soon as I got there, I realized why. Woo! Sydney! Brother! <laughs> Sydney had been told in a dream he needed to go home. Son, I want you to do us both a favor. I want you to call on Pastor Reed and Pastor Robbins. Invite them here Thursday next. You just being sociable? You and Sydney are home now. I want no more of this Mormon rubbish. They're good Christian men. They'll bring a Christ-like message. A prophet in our Prophets day? Prophets are a thing of the past. Do you believe that God is among us? <laughs> Most certainly. Surely the Lord God would do nothing 
but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. Well, if God did speak to man, surely he would come to learned men such as us. We. What? Proper English is we. He, he would come to learned men such as we. In any case, why would God reveal his word to a young boy? Yes. Why would the Lord speak to a young boy? Like he did Samuel. 1 Samuel 3, 4. Gentlemen, it is my earnest testimony given to me by the Spirit that Joseph Smith is indeed a prophet of God. And it is my testimony that Joe Smith is a liar and a thief. And to believe his stories sets you among the weakest of morons. And any man who would follow him would rob his own mother. Enough! You have crossed the line and I will hear no more. Leave our home before I... Go, 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 <laughs> You're not welcome in Sunday school anymore. And forget about the socials. Get out of here. And as a kid, I hated your Sunday school class. I'm sorry, Mother. But no one can slander my brother while I'm here. Now, why would he come to a young boy? <laughs> Oh, he would come to learned men such as us. Such as us. Yup, yup. <laughs> Eve, you need to know that what I testified of to them is true. God has come again to earth, and angels minister to men. I myself was about to die from a serious rupture, but through the laying on of hands, I was healed. You were healed? The way Christ healed others. Here, this is the Book of Mormon. That very night, I chose to cast my lot with Sydney and the Mormons and another adventure was about to begin. I should have known the moment you returned. What? You always have been and always will be trouble. You abandoned us once and you'll leave us again. Mother, I'm just... You bring only shame to your father and embarrassment to me. Because I seek to do what's right? No, because you only think of your precious self. It's not within you to become a good man. Once again, in my mother's eyes, I had failed to be good. So we did as she asked and bid farewell, then headed out for the city of Joseph. 
I had many questions, but they were all answered, and the determination became strong within me to be a defender of the gospel, of Zion and her cause, come what may. The same year I was baptized, a young man halfway around the world was baptized also. His name was Thomas Dobson. You have gifts, Thomas. Let the Spirit guide you to foster them. You can help others with them. Though I continually fell short, I was trying to do better, which helped me through the death of Brother Joseph, the Mormon battalion, and many other trials. At length, I made it to the Salt Lake Valley and thought to continue my pursuits there in Zion. You know what the worst thing about multiple wives is? Multiple mother-in-laws. He's funny, but he's not. Brother Brigham? Arsa? Beef? There is something that I would like you to do for me. Before you spend another minute in this place, I want you to go home and shave off that beard. Yes, brother. Not a word. I'm really not like my brother. <laughs> well, what got into you? I think the cat licked you clean. I look like a peeled onion. Brother Hanks, did I ask you to shave? Yes, Brother Brigham, you did. Well then, go on home and do it right. There is a man that will give strict obedience regardless the nature of my request. There is a man that I can trust with the most important missions.
Oh, boy, marvellous. You truly have a gift, Thomas. Someday you'll be a great strength to many that carry heavy burdens. <laughs> Through those next years, I contracted to carry the mail from Salt Lake to St. Louis and back. I made the trip most 50 times. So many times, it became humdrum. I crossed the plains during any season of the year. I got to where it did not matter to me what the conditions were. I was again being prepared. On one such trip, I was warned that an angry tribe was camped a short distance off the trail. But rather than avoiding them, I felt impressed to call on them. Mangain, oh! Mangain, oh! I was taken to the chief's tent. They were clearly very happy I had made the effort to stop by. We got to Tiaho. Balo, Malingua. Madu, Wahanda, Brigham Young. Wakata, Ute. Wakanda, Wukari, Piao. I peak here, Upao. Wazinga u wa ipi a pupi a puna ho a ipi ki wa ipi viti a ho. What kind of weekend? What a pity, what up here here, oh.
I believe we are each given certain gifts. I was coming to realize one of mine. Mother, how can you allow the crier to pitch our name about? He is announcing to all our private plans. Truth be told, you have no care at all about our private plans. You are embarrassed. And perhaps I am. I have no desire to travel to some uncivilized desert full of wild beasts where they have no respect for the dance. You have no desire to leave your sweetheart, but Thomas, you know she will never accept the church. The prophet here said go. And go we must, for I know this to be the true church of God, me boy. You've got to lose your life to find it. Two months later, the Dobsons were aboard the ship Horizon. And two months after that... Me boy, I can scarcely put one foot in front of the other. Let it be spoken again, mother. I wanted no part of this. The Lord looks after his own son. For your efforts, you'll be blessed. Trouble? Oh, there'd be no trouble. Just a matter of Jonathan Stone found eaten by the wolves. No. But the stone? It can't be! It can't. Oh. And it be. Brother Dobson, I'm told you danced the jig. The saints could use a bit of cheering up at this time. It would mean much to us all. It must have meant someone else. Not I. In October 1856, I had contracted for a load of fish, which I pulled out of Utah Lake. I stayed that night at the cabin of Gurney Brown. We're building this brick wall, and he says, Hey, Ephraim, how thick is that brick wall? In many ways, I believe my entire life had been a plan, so I might be prepared for what became my greatest adventure. Ephraim. Ephraim. Y yes, Brother Brown. The handcart people are in trouble, and you are wanted. Will you help them? Yes, I, I will go if I'm called. Ephraim. The handcart people are in trouble, and you are wanted. Will you help them? Yes.
What if they should fight us in the night? Oh, keep your air on. There'll be no wolf worries while I'm about. There I was, lying on the ground, looking right into the eyes of the biggest, meanest, beastly wolf I'd ever seen. I didn't know what to do. Then a voice said to me, poke him in the eye. So I poked him in the eye. And you know what he did? He whimpered like a little pup and ran away, never to bother me again. And he won't bother you either. They're frightened of him, you know. Bless you, son. The nights grow colder. Are you keeping on, Thomas? Not really, Mother. I'd have to say no, not really. I've waited 19 years to make this journey, son. And if we hang on a bit, for the shore of it will be blessed. Let me tell you how I would like to be blessed. If I have to hear that pipsqueak say one more time how he poked that wolf in the eye, I'm gonna poke him in the eye. I am sorry. I was only trying to soothe their fears. Thomas. I'm so sorry. It's been a long time. Brother Dobson. Brother Tyler. Thomas, I have a calling for you. I would like you to accept a position in the burial squad. Are there so many now that we require a squad? Yes. Thank you, brother. Pardon me. Pardon me, brother. I do not know your name. Are you dodging me? Pardon. It is just difficult for me to speak to a young girl. A young, pretty girl. When I have not bathed in four weeks. You haven't bathed in four weeks? How remarkable. You smell as if it's only been three. Thank you. Next morning, I headed toward Salt Lake to learn what Brother Brigham would have me do. Turns out, right when I was going looking for the prophet, the prophet was looking for me. As I pronounced in conference, all the piety in the world will not keep those souls from harm's way. We must show our faith through our actions. That is my religion, and that is the dictation of the Holy Ghost that I possess. Go and bring in those saints who are still on the plains. I will get ready and can start in a few days. I can be ready on Thursday. Brother Brigham, I am ready now. The Lord appreciates.
prepares each of us for the purposes that he has placed us on this earth to accomplish. Moments are set before each one of us that if we give all that is within us, will bring us to an ability and power we have not before known. Though the days were still warm, Brother Brigham knew things would soon change. We'll be fine. Albert, will you do us the honor of riding in our cart? Superb. Unless you feel goodness, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. Normally I would secure myself a car, so perhaps several others, but uh, today is an exception to be sure. I'm really quite a good swimmer, you should see. Uh, I could get across in no time, I'm sure. Just not feeling very well today. Uh, I'm I feel bad. I see these other people. I feel as though I could help, but oh, that water's wet. I see you, Sir Cross, sister. Bless you, Captain. Who will help us, Mommy? The Lord helps those who help themselves, Paul. Come about, let's be on with it. It's just, it's awfully deep, and um, but, uh, we really did a great job. I'm grateful to be a crosser. Really, bless you, brother. Thank you. Put me on. I did promise I would walk every step of the way to Zion, but I really don't think rivers count. I mean, it's awfully deep and awfully wet, and I just don't think I would make it. I mean, I am pretty good. Swimmer, but I don't. <laughs> Somebody, hey!
I brought you a gift. My mother says that if one rubs these leaves into one's hands, it will soften and heal them. May I? Is it working? Yes. For certain it is working. Brother Dobson. Fine now, children. It's right with the Lord. Let me. Please. Allow me. He gave everything for the gospel. It was a pleasant enough go for a few days, though my wagon, full of supplies for the hand carters, was not the fastest rig on the trail. Then, still early in the season, what Brigham prophesied came true. 
To be on the trail in these conditions meant we were all risking our lives. Hey, Frog! Hey, Frog! Hey! We're hunkering down here until she blows over! We'll be here just free! Worthless. Utterly worthless. Better without them at all. Absolutely. Are you leaving them? Yes, I am leaving them. May I have them, please? They will do you no good. They can't be made to stay afoot. Take them, Elizabeth. Thank you. For soup. What? She wants to boil them and make a broth for her family. So it's come to this, has it? that there is nothing more to eat than a bit of disgusting broth made from a stodgy boot. What's her tale? Elizabeth Bradshaw. She's a marvelous sister. She had two husbands perish back home, but she'll not give up her hope to get designed. She was already on board ship, ready to sail from Liverpool. Her two wealthy brothers came aboard and taught her not to take her children to those forsaken Mormons in such a despised place. They promised that if she would stay, she would never yearn for anything money could buy. But she held her son close, turned to her brothers and said, the gospel is true. Joseph Smith is a prophet of God and we are going to Zion. Sister Bradshaw knows there are possessions more precious than gold. Reddick Allred had been assigned to wait with supplies at South Pass till wagons could make it through. You don't know what the worst thing is about uh, multiple wives? Being out here on the trail all the time? It's the chap lips. I can tell you how to fix that. Pick up one of them horse apples on the trail. Rub it around your lips. Sounds like an odd cure. It won't cure them. It'll sure keep you from licking them. Ain't no way there's a company out in this. He's either stopped somewhere in Nebraska or he's dead of the cold. Did you get word to go back? Get word? How could we get word? You gonna go, E? Please cross back. 
and help the others. Just get yourself over me, boy. Others have boots. Just get yourself over. It's okay, we can do this. Remember, the Lord helped us last time. Remember, we can do this. Please. Needs to be my big man, please. Sister please. Bradshaw. I was hoping your son would assist me across the river. What do you think of that? I see that fine. Captain, but first, I must see the others across. He's coming to help us. Yes, he's helping others. Strange how lively your thoughts become after making a poor decision. Did you get word to go back? How could we get word? You only think of your precious self. The Lord prepares each of us. Keep your head here. Head the wrong way, boys! Going home! He's either camped or dead! How do you know that? I'll make you a proposition. There's a decent place to camp just back a piece. You wait there. We'll go on and find them. What makes you think you can find them when we couldn't? Brother Brigham sent me to find these saints. And I'll find them, or I'll give my life trying. We'll wait for you, Arson. Ephraim, will you help them? Yes. I seek to do what's right. Keep the fire going, boys.
Sometimes it's not which side of the fork in the road to take, it's which direction on the road you ought to be headed. Despite our prayers, Mother, they are not getting better. They are getting worse. So is this the blessing of the righteous which you speak of? Please, Lord. We need thy help and we need it now. Or there will not be a live one amongst us. It wasn't long before our wagon was snowbound. We determined they would wait for help, and I would move on. Even on horse, it'll be a tough go. Can't move mountains while you're sitting on your backside. I saw what you did, helping others across the river. It's a really lovely thing to do. Thomas, did you leave a girl in England? Yes. Was she pretty? Yes, she was. Did you leave a boy in England? Yes. Was he handsome? No. It's quite plain, actually. So I just tried not to look at him too much. Look at me. Mama, you're off. Move on now. Best be off. Esther. Everyone back. I will keep an eye on you. No, Thomas. I'll be fine. You help the others. Eve! Eve, we found him! Twasn't much later, Joseph A. Young and Abel Gar showed. They had found the Martin Company at Red Buttes and left several rescuers there to aid them. They were riding day and night to get back and report to Brother Brigham. They hurried off, exhorting me to find them and do what I could. Their account of the deprivation they saw startled me. I knew those saints had no food left, so I asked for a desire that had been planted in my heart Dear Father, you've told us to ask for what we stand in need of. I ask you now that a buffalo be put before me. It was a rare thing to find buffalo around that place at this late season. I knew the hand of the Lord was in it, for that animal had stayed behind when the rest of its kind left for their winter quarters. 
I skinned and dressed it, then loaded up my horses with it. Brothers! The sun was about an hour high in the west when I spied something in the distance. I perceived it moved. I was then satisfied this was the handcart company led by Captain Edward Martin and Daniel Tyler. The sight that met my gaze as I entered into their midst can never be erased from my memory and any concerns I had regarding my own well-being departed. Dear brother, the prophecy was made by one of the brethren that the company would feast on buffalo meat when our provisions run short. You and God have rescued us, for this shall be known for generations. What's your name, sister? Alice Dobson, Preston, Lancashire, England. My son is not faring well, and this is surely a grand prize. Been through much. Perhaps it would be best if we rested here a day. Though exhausted and starved as they may be, Captain, we must keep them moving, or we all perish together. Pardon me, brothers. Yes, yeah, sister. It's me, husband. Brother Tyler, he is a good man. He was president of the London branch. He's been giving us his rations for many weeks. I'm sorry, sister, but I cannot administer to a dead man.
Brother Hanks, would you please stay and prepare him for burial? Brother Martin, there's much sorrow in the Blair tent tonight. But the Lord will use us as his hands if we are willing and worthy. Why do you do that? None of us are truly clean. But we must do our best to be so as we petition the Lord for his blessings. What's his name, sister? David Blair. My husband. David Blair, we anoint you with this consecrated oil and command you in the name of Jesus Christ, breathe and live. <laughs> The effect of the blessing was immediate. Brother Blair sat up and began to sing a hymn. Word spread quickly after this and the greater portion of my time was then devoted to waiting on the sick. I had ministered to several hundred. It would be a number of days before we would meet the supply wagons, and there was much to be done. Eve! Brother! Though more valley boys arrived almost daily, it was only as a drop to a bucket to what was needed. Doing so well, my boy. Just a bit of broth. Make you stronger and warm your toes. I want you to know that I am sorry for the bother and heartache I have caused. Forgive me. None for the wear. I have been my own enemy on this journey. And I have laid many saints to rest as we've gone on. But soon, this will bury me. Hey, none such talk. Tomorrow will be a warmer day. Where is Father? 
And now me. I'll soon be back. Brother Hanks. Yes, sister. It's my son Thomas. He's having a go of it. All in the company say that you have a gift. Would you bless him? Sister, his feet had the black. They'll have to come off. Please, Brother Hanks. Please ask God for help. He's a grand dancer of the hornpipe jig. Other than the gospel, it's all he has. In the past day, I have removed limbs not near this black. <coughs> Brother. It's Thomas. You have faith in the Savior, that he has all power. I do. I do. <coughs> but I am not worthy. I have been poor and weak in my actions. <laughs> As have we all. Brother, you are a holy man. I have so many faults, I cannot count them all. Well, how is it then you do so much good? I try. Thomas stops. The time for you to leave this world has not come. You have a work yet to do. I promise you, though they be blackened, your feet shall be saved. Through your faith, you will glorify God, and others will hear of and speak of this day for many years to come. They will learn of you in ways we do not now even understand. Thomas Dobson, in the name of our Savior, I say unto you, take up thy bed and walk. me. 
Thomas. The spirits in the camp are low. Do you feel the strength to now lift as you have been lifted? Steady on, my boy. You are a good man, Brother Hanks. And I'm certain wherever your mother is, she's very proud of you. Many stood in need of a rescue that winter, and I was one. The Gospel of Jesus Christ is another name for opportunity. It offers us the privilege and responsibility to give something back by becoming better than we were. I notice the Lord always counts on human folks to help him out. Thomas fostered his talents and lifted the spirits of many to carry on. I tried to choose the right paths and be worthy when called. I like to think the three of us made a difference.
For a little while have I forsaken thee. But with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee. For a moment But with everlasting kindness Will I gather thee And with mercy will I take thee Neath my wings For the mountain shall depart And the hill shall be removed and the valley shall be lost beneath the sea. But no, my child, my kindness shall not depart from thee. Thine afflictions seem at times too great to bear. I know thine every thought and every care. And though the fairy jaws of hell gape after thee, I am with thee. And with everlasting mercy will I succor thee, and with healing will I take thee neath my wings. For the mountain shall depart, and the hill shall be removed, and the valley shall be lost beneath the So hold on thy way, for I shall be with thee. And mine angel shall encircle thee. Doubt not what thou knowest, fear not man, for he cannot hurt thee. Food.